Hello and welcome to Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Shonul Malik. Thank you for tuning in today's segment. The annual town election is coming up on April 4th, and there is one contested race for a town-wide position this year. There are three candidates running for two open school committee seats. Joining me today is one of the candidates, Amy Zaccarello. Welcome, Amy. Hello, Shanul. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Thank you for making the time. Amy, let's start with uh, getting to know you a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, absolutely. Um, so as, as you said, I'm Amy Zuccarello. I have lived in Belmont for mm -hmm. almost my entire life, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't mean I didn't leave, because I did. <laughs> but I was um, raised here over on Marlboro Street, mm -hmm. um, which is like on the other side of where Grove Street is. Some people don't know that street. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, very proud uh, graduate of Belmont High School. I went to um, the Wellington School. Um, the Chenery Middle School, and mm -hmm. then again BHS, but all um, all of them were in different buildings than uh, than they are now. A little mm -hmm. bit older, um, and uh, ultimately, after I graduated from Belmont High School, I uh, went to college at Boston University, mm -hmm. and then I attended law school at BC Law. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't go too far. I was still pretty local. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, my husband and I, we had gotten married, um, we lived outside of Belmont, and we decided it was time that we wanted to have a family, and we really felt like Belmont would be the ideal place to raise our kids. Mm -hmm. So we returned in 2003. We've been homeowners since then. Mm -hmm. um, we're really fortunate to have uh, raised our kids um, in the Burbank area, Burbank mm -hmm. school area, and our kids both attended Burbank. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, we have two kids. Um, the oldest, it's hard to believe, is actually a graduate of uh, Belmont High School. Wow. I know. Time. Congratulations it, on that. I know. I, well, I've got one done. Um, but he graduated in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, he's now a student at Oberlin Conservatory in Ohio, mm -hmm. and he's studying um, jazz composition and jazz trombone, which is mm -hmm. really exciting for our family mm -hmm. to have a musician in the family. Mm -hmm. And then my daughter is a freshman at Belmont High School. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, you asked me a little bit more about me. I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I um, practice in the area of financial restructuring, mm -hmm. um, which is very interesting. Um, I typically work on different kinds of financial transactions. And I, um, you know, get to ultimately try to solve uh, problems that are caused by, you know, companies being in distress, financial distress, or unable otherwise to pay debts as they become due. So mm -hmm. um, it's an exciting practice, and it's one I enjoy very much. Mm -hmm. And have you always been in this uh, area of law? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, actually, I, I got into it because um, my very first day of work at my first firm was the day before 9-11. Oh. Um, so, yeah. you know, I wasn't I wasn't supposed to be a distressed lawyer. I was really supposed to be doing kind of mergers and acquisitions and other mm -hmm. corporate transactions. But, you know, you do the work that comes along, particularly mm -hmm. when you're a new lawyer. So I was really fortunate that Bankruptcy had an opening. There was a need there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got along really well with the folks in that area, and I just was been fascinated by it since I started doing that work. So mm -hmm. I never really, I never really strayed from that path once I kind of figured out what it was and, mm -hmm. and learned that I really like it. Mm -hmm. Amy, you have a pretty extensive history being in Belmont. You know, <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, born and raised here, went to school, and so on and so forth. Can you share with us what kind of volunteer positions have you held sure. uh, in, in all these different times or the ones that are most dear to you? Yeah, no, absolutely. So I guess kind of the good thing about having kids that are a little bit older is that I've gotten to do volunteer and community activities in all different places. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, mo you know, one of the things that I, I know a lot of people from is the work that I did with POMS, which mm -hmm. is Parents of Music Students, as I know that you know. Mm -hmm. um, so some people will remember seeing me in the snack shack, you mm -hmm. know, selling hot dogs during soccer night or, you know, one of the football games. Um, but that was a great opportunity to work with a great organization, um, which, you know, people may know supplements the public school music program mm -hmm. by providing um, for additional enhancements, like like guest clinicians and things like that with privately raised funds. So mm -hmm. um, that was something that I really liked. You know, before that, I did work in um, the different PTAs, both at Burbank um, and at Chenery. I was the treasurer of the uh, Burbank PTA for a little while, and then I found that I really enjoyed working on different events. So mm -hmm. I worked on you know, for those proud Burbank grads who may remember the uh, Geography Challenge, which mm -hmm. was a program that I was a co-chair of for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, and I also did work on library night and science nights and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, most important to me, though, I cannot, I cannot understate the importance of my work with Belmont Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. um, I've been involved with the Girl Scouts in Belmont um, as an adult now for about nine years. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's really a wonderful organization, and a lot of people don't necessarily know mm -hmm. about it, particularly if you don't have um, children who've been in the program. But 
I started as a troop leader for my daughter's troop. That's 69200. I have to give them a little shout out um, because they've been so great to me. And, uh, and then I took on four and a half years ago the role of the townwide coordinator for all of our troops. Mm -hmm. So we have almost 300 Girl Scouts in Belmont Girl Scouts now. And wow. um, it's, I tell you, it's just, I feel so privileged to be able to, mm -hmm. you know, see the things that these girls are able to do. The whole, you know, idea behind Girl Scouts is that girls are learning to take the lead mm -hmm. and become more independent and really challenge themselves to do mm -hmm. things that they never envisioned themselves doing or mm -hmm. things that they didn't necessarily think they'd be able to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to set a good example now that I'm running for <laughs> school committee because sure uh, we really want girls to believe anything is possible. And certainly I believe that. Um, but that's a great organization that I've been privileged to work with for a long time. Sure thing. Uh, and I think the uh, children can be so inspirational and teach you such life lessons. It, uh, that it's so adults, true. You don't even realize. No, it's really true. And I think it's one of those things that people say, oh, Girl Scouts, you know, you sell cookies and you do that kind of thing. But there's nothing really like it when you see someone you know, someone in my troop a number of years ago was really apprehensive about, you know, riding a horse for the first time. Mm -hmm. That was something very overwhelming for her. Um, and, you know, one of the activities we did as a troop was horseback riding and just seeing someone feel more comfortable of, you know, hey, I can do this. I mm -hmm. never thought that I'd be courageous enough to do it, but now I'm going to try it and mm -hmm. really conquer that. It's pretty incredible. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, again, it's, mm -hmm. It's one of those things that I've always taken a lot of interest in, mm -hmm. you know, children's issues and really providing kind of mm -hmm. the right environment for kids to succeed at whatever it is mm -hmm. they want to do. And, um, and it's really, Girl Scouts has really given me a, a lot of rewarding uh, time with kids in this community. Thank you for sharing that insight with us, Amy, <laughs> and getting to know a little bit more about you. Um, so it's interesting, you had a lot of voluntary experience in, in schools uh, throughout, whether that be elementary or middle or high. Yeah. Um, can you tell us how these voluntary experiences have made you who you are today and how the skills and experiences are a good fit and make you qualified to be on the school committee? Sure, absolutely. Well, you know, I would have thought up until a few years ago when I think everybody became more focused on what the school committee does. Mm. Um, you know, I would have thought kind of before that that the school committee is really for people with an educational background. Mm. You know, it's for people who are either teachers or who have advanced training or advanced degrees mm -hmm. in educational policy. You know, that's the kind of background that I just thought, you know, people who were on the school committee needed to have. But I think, you know, maybe one good thing about the pandemic is that we watched a lot of school committee meetings as a family, and I know lots of families did this. And I started to see that, that the decisions that were being made and the conversations that were happening were really a lot more productive when people who had diverse skill sets and mm -hmm. people who had different perspectives were part of those conversations. Mm -hmm. So I think that ultimately the things that I do well, you know, work really hard, identify what do I want to what I want to accomplish, whether that's in a volunteer capacity or in my day job type capacity, mm -hmm. those are skills I bring to the school committee mm -hmm. and to everything I do. Mm -hmm. And in addition, you know, the fact that I have this legal background and I have a pretty strong financial background, mm -hmm. I really feel like those are going to be assets to the school committee. Mm -hmm. And is that sort of the the main premise behind your wanting to run now, deciding to run at this time? Yes, a couple of things. I mean, I think, and this is going to sound like a cheesy answer, but it's 100% true. You know, I'm a product of the Belmont Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I came from a family background where there really were not other people in professional jobs, part mm -hmm. of my family. Mm -hmm. And I, I've always been such a believer that public schools provides the foundation for mm -hmm. our kids to be able to accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. You know, my family felt it was really important to be here in Belmont my whole life. And to raise me and my brother to go through the Belmont schools because we would have such a good foundation for whatever we wanted to do next. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like I was a beneficiary of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, ultimately, if I have skills now that people think will be useful to the current school committee, it's mm -hmm. really my obligation to do it. And mm -hmm. you know, that that's something that you know we talked about before. Not a lot of people want to run for school committee now mm -hmm. because it's a demanding job, mm -hmm. and it's certainly a job that's a attracted a lot more public attention in the last few years. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm ready for it. I'm prepared to do it. I have the skills to contribute, and mm -hmm. I feel like this is this is my time now. Wonderful. Um, what do you think are the top needs of the district, though? 
Well, I think a few things. I mean, folks who have followed the school committee and certainly the warrant committee and the budget summits know the, the two big things. I mean, I think selection of a new superintendent mm -hmm. is obviously super important. Mm -hmm. I mean, any time that you're looking for someone within the district to really lead the tone of how our schools are administered, you know, it will make a really big difference. Mm -hmm. You know, who is selected now and, and to make sure that it's someone with the right leadership skills and really with the right experience, um, ideally someone who understands Belmont. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, someone who really understands how the town works, mm -hmm. um, what the stressors are, and what people expect from our schools when they move here. So I think that's a big thing. And then obviously the budget issues are, are mm -hmm. huge. And again, anyone who's paid attention to things recently knows that there's a lot of stress on the financial, mm -hmm. um, you know, elements of our town. And those obviously extend to the school budget. This is not a time when the numbers will allow us to have everything we want as mm -hmm. much as we might want to have everything. So I think we really need some people in the school committee level to be able to look at the, the lists of wants and needs mm -hmm. and make good decisions mm -hmm. about what things we really have to have now and really want to have now in our district mm -hmm. and what are maybe things that we can defer until a little bit later, mm -hmm. you know, once we've put in some measures which will free up some additional cash and allow us ultimately to be able to have more things in the school district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, budget and, and superintendent, it seems like those are those are pretty much those the are two top, things. The two yeah, I think that's right, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and would you do you have any specific ideas for how to make improvements uh, to the Belmont public school system, generally speaking, or specifically on the two um, priorities that you just stated? Yeah. So I mean, I'll talk about budget because I think that the superintendent thing is really kind of in flux at the moment, mm -hmm. right? It's not that we have someone that yeah. we're replacing. It's more that we, we're going to have a vacancy and we're trying to fill right. it. But I think the budget is the kind of thing that um, you know we really need to look at how we're spending our money. And, you know, I think um, I'm the kind of person who has the ability to really do a deep dive into financial information. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think about the schools very much the way I think about my clients. You know, it's not at all uncommon that I have a company which comes to me and says, I have this issue. I'm not going to be able to make this debt payment that's due in six months. What do I do about it? So it's ve not very different than when you look at the school budget and you look at, again, the things that we hope to be able to provide our students with next year or the year after. And then we look at the dollars that are allocated from the town to fund the school budget. And if those mm -hmm. things don't match, which right now they do not, it's a matter of figuring out where you can save those costs. Mm -hmm. I think we have to be creative in order to make that happen. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's something that we can just say, you know, we'll, we'll cut X number of teaching positions or will increase class size by a huge number. I think we really have to look at where the dollars get spent now. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that I'm focused on are out of district spending, mm -hmm. um, which of course we need to do in order to accommodate special education plans. Mm -hmm. um, but the question I have is, you know, can we accommodate needs in-house if we invest the money up front mm -hmm. to build a more robust program to accommodate the needs of certain students? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's something which is, again, not solved in a day, but you know, it's very difficult to control control spending when it's an out-of-district expense. It's a lot easier to control mm -hmm. when it's something you can manage in-house. It may be that that's a viable option. It may be that it isn't. It's one mm -hmm. of those things that we really have to look at. Similarly, I think administrative costs mm -hmm. are very high. We're now effectively building another school by having this you know, upper middle school, mm -hmm. which is housed at the high school campus. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what are the administrative costs that we're going to bear by adding another school? Mm -hmm. And how can those costs be shared potentially across mm -hmm. other schools in mm -hmm. the district? Mm -hmm. Again, I think it's just something that really we have to look at and it may or may not be the best way to save the mm -hmm. dollars that we're looking to save, but it's certainly an option. So those are some, those are some ideas that I have. So for, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying given the limited budget, one of the ways you would prioritize is to see any of the line items, cost line items that can be brought in-house yes. so that you can manage right. that a little bit more, exactly. more control, and, and where can cost sharing can happen across the schools. The district, yes, exactly. Um, any other uh, ways that you think you might want to prioritize what makes the budget and what gets out? Well, I think the things that need to stay in the budget are things that are directly impacting the student experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, as much as possible. And I know you say, well, you run a school. Of course, everything affects the student experience. But I think that we really have to think about the reasons that kids come to school every day and enjoy school every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. We have really tremendous educators in this town. 
and we're so fortunate. I mean, this is really what makes the school system what it is. As much as we like our beautiful buildings and it's great to have nice grounds and you know, you have to have a certain number of parking spaces, it's really the educators that make the town work and mm -hmm. the school system work the way it does. Mm -hmm. So before I would, I would ever think that we're cutting classroom teachers or we're reducing offerings in the school. You know, we say things like we're not going to have foreign language or we're going to eliminate strings at a certain grade level. These are things that kids do every day. Mm -hmm. and, and in some cases, there are reasons kids get excited about coming to school. Sure. So these are things that I would be much less in favor of reducing. Mm -hmm. um, again, the classroom experience, I think, is something that makes Belmont really special and it's something that we need to do our best to preserve. Mm -hmm. So I hear you paying a lot more emphasis on uh, the holistic student and inside classroom teaching as well as outside classroom teaching. I think gets, that's right. The, what gets kids excited. That's right. Um, and with that said, you know, limited budget, student experience, but we also have very diverse student needs. You know, it's right. not it's not a uniform student body. Right. Uh, so different students, different needs. How would you address those? I mean, needs? thank goodness it is diverse, really, because yeah. I mean, you don't, you know, you know, it, it's we live it, in a diverse world. We so do, and it, you know, honestly, it's a great experience for everyone to go to school with people mm -hmm. who are not exactly like themselves, mm -hmm. and it's certainly preparation for the real world. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, there are really two goals that have to work together. Mm -hmm. We know that Belmont is a school system that is known for academic excellence. Mm -hmm. Academic excellence, it, there's no substitute for it. It's that important. And it's really something that I owe a lot of the preparation that I have, having been able to go to a competitive college and then a competitive law school. I owe a lot of that to the preparation that I got when I was here as a student. You know, back in those days, and it's not that long ago, but it's long enough ago, we didn't have things like extracurricular math. I mean, if it existed, mm -hmm. and certainly my family didn't know about it. So, I mean, it's one of those things that I think academic excellence is number one. But we have a diverse student body, and we have to remember that it's really a two-goal system. It's one, maintaining academic excellence, but at the same time, supporting the needs of everybody in the school system. Mm. It's not only one group. It's not only certain, you know, um, a group with a certain set of needs. It's really everybody who goes to school here, because mm -hmm. public school is school for everyone. And I think that's really important. I mean, the town has made some excellent excellent strides toward mm -hmm. uh, diversity and inclusion over mm -hmm. the last couple of years. I mean, obviously the hiring of Chantel Washington mm -hmm. and really expanding its reach toward addressing social justice issues, address addressing issues that are from, that stem from having a more diverse student body. We mm -hmm. have more work to do there. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, resources can't be um, directed away from those efforts. It's really mm -hmm. important that we preserve those. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, sure. for that thoughtful answer. Um, you know, it's it's a school committee, as you said. You know, it's a demanding job. Uh, yeah, definitely. It has, it has power, and along with power comes a lot of responsibility. That's right. Spider-Man uh, quote. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I am wondering: Is there a decision that was made by the school committee in the past, yep. or or recently that you disagreed with? And if you could share that with, with us, please. Sure, happy to. So I think, first of all, I'm going to preface my comments with, it is so much easier to look back and, and sure. not be the one in the room at the time. It's the it's power of the hindsight. It is the power of hindsight, yeah. right? So it's, yeah. it's and I say this with all due respect to any of my colleagues in Belmont, who I know uh, for a fact have all done a, an excellent job and done the best they can at the mm -hmm. time making a decision. I was very disappointed in the, <clears throat> as we opened school in 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, and I know I'm not alone in this decision, I'm in this feeling this way, right? Um, my son was a senior in high school, and you know the Belmont's decision to begin school in a full remote mm. way. Um, I was disappointed in that decision, and I think it goes back to, you know, the original plan was supposed to be we're going to have three different plans. We're going to have a full in-person option, we're going to have a hybrid option, and then we're going to have, you know, a full remote option. Mm -hmm. And that sounded like a really good plan back mm -hmm. in the spring of 2020, and I think people embraced that generally. But again, it was a lot to do in a short time period. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. the thing that I regret is that we weren't prepared with those three viable plans mm -hmm. when the school year started. Because what ended up happening is that, you know, the, the pandemic evolved the way it evolved. Mm -hmm. And we really didn't have the ability to pivot from one to the other to the other early enough in the year. And so then I felt like we were playing catch up a lot because we needed to put together some kind of hybrid plan which was very complicated and something mm -hmm. for which there had been no rule book as to how you're actually going to do it. And, you know, 
it definitely, I think, was a disadvantage to students who were not able to return to a full-in classroom or even to a hybrid classroom earlier in the mm -hmm. year than I would have hoped. But again, I, I say this with the, the utmost respect for my friends and neighbors on the school committee that mm -hmm. it was a really hard time to be on the school committee and certainly to be an administrator in the educational system. So, you know, we all do our best, but I think that's something that when we look back, we could have improved. Sure thing. Thank you for, for your being candid in me. We oh, appreciate sure, no that. problem. I hope um, no one's too mad at me, but I'll be uh, all right. <laughs> uh, what, what is your vision for education in, in Belmont? You've been a Belmont uh, student yep. and a mother of Belmont kids. Uh, what, what's your vision? I think that um, we have a great school system here, and we need to keep it keep it as strong as it has ever been. Mm -hmm. You know, I probably am I'm feeling a little repetitive, but I think the truth is public school should be the foundation mm -hmm. for anything anyone who goes from goes through Belmont Public Schools wants to accomplish at any point later in life. It mm -hmm. should be enough to get you there. I feel like I was very, very prepared when I started college mm -hmm. based on the fact that I had gone to school here. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity and took AP classes. I learned to write, and I feel that I write still the, to this day so well, very mindful of my junior year English teacher, who <laughs> was a real stickler but a very good teacher, right? Um, and I feel like I talk to kids who have just graduated, those in my son's year, those in the year more recently than that, who say the same thing, who say, I can't believe how ready for college I was because I went to school in Belmont. Mm. And so I think that's the kind of thing that we really need to make sure is always the case in Belmont and mm -hmm. for our public schools. And it's getting to be a lot harder now to be a college student, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you've been through this with your child. I've been through this with mine. College acceptances and admissions are super competitive now. It's, I mean, uh, it's, it's, out there. it is, and it's, it's, it's hurting the students' mental health. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a great environment, but I think what we need to do is focus on how we can give kids the best preparation for what they're going to do next. Mm -hmm. And that starts in kindergarten, because mm -hmm. when you learn those kind of social skills and you learn to make friends when you're that young and you learn you know, how to respect other people and you ultimately learn to study hard and then you learn to be academically challenged, mm -hmm. that's all part of the picture of really mm -hmm. who, who you're going to become. And it, it certainly has been the case for me. Mm -hmm. um, I like to think that you know, we take the kids who come into Belmont Public Schools can emerge as really versions of their best self. Mm -hmm. And I think my vision is to make sure that's always true. Thank you. Sure. Uh, why, why should we vote for you, Amy? Or anyone vote for you? Why should anyone vote for me? Well, <laughs> I would say a few things. First of all, I'm invested in the outcome here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't say enough about the fact that Belmont is my home. It will always be my home. And I think I take it very seriously when things go wrong in our town. I get defensive when I say, well, how can you say bad things about Belmont? Um, I'm, I'm invested in what the outcomes are. Um, second, I have the preparation and the exposure to know what it's like to raise kids mm -hmm. through the whole school system. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I've learned a lot from having kids in preschool and then kids in elementary school and kids in middle school and ultimately high school and now as a graduate from, from Belmont High School. Mm -hmm. So I really have kind of this long, like I would say it's like a longitudinal exposure to what it's like to be a parent of a student at all of those different levels. Mm -hmm. I work super hard. Everyone will tell you this. If, if it's something that I take on, I'm going to give you 110% because I just don't know how to do it any other way. Um, I think I could get, you know, if you ask anyone who's worked with me in Girl Scouts, uh, you know, we set our minds to something, we make sure that we accomplish, we accomplish it. It's the same for my clients, you know, who, who pay me to do their work. I just take responsibilities that I take on very seriously. I know that nobody will work harder at this job than I will. And finally, mm -hmm. I think I have the experience that the committee needs. And you know, it is with that that I really feel that it is a responsibility for me to give back to my community, and I'm really excited. I hope I get to do it. So please vote for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you for uh, telling us about yourself, stopping at this, by the studio, and giving us a little peek into your candidacy <laughs> and, and your experience. It was a pleasure to have you in studio today. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Thank you for our viewers for tuning in. I'm your host, Jonul Malik. Do not forget to vote on April 4th.